the Nokia 3310, with its modest 13 MHz CPU made by Texas Instruments. It's amazing how much Nokia were able to do with this little CPU. In the previous video, I looked at some of the awesome but lesser known aspects of the Nokia 3310, including firmware upgrading, third party games, and custom ROMs. This time I'm exploring how far Nokia expanded the original 3310 hardware and software, including 3D Graphics, a Java software platform which enabled the first phone with downloadable apps and games. So let's do this. After the 3310, 3315 and 3330, Nokia released a much lesser known 3350. This model was released for Asian markets and had one important difference, a higher resolution display. Instead of the 84 by 48 pixel LCD panel of the earlier 33 series models, the 3350 had a 96 by 65 pixel LCD, which is about 35% more resolution. It should be possible to upgrade a Nokia 3330 to 3350 firmware if the only hardware difference is the LCD. Though one problem I may have is the keypad layout being different. The 3310 slash 3330 uses a single menu button navigation system with just up, down, select and clear. Whereas the 3350 uses a two button system with a few extra buttons for navigation. This could result in some funky key pressing after the upgrade. So the 3310 uses an 84 by 48 pixel LCD. So it's about 4000 pixels or so. But the 3350 uses a 96 by 65 pixel LCD. So I'm going to need to mount this LCD inside the phone. Going back to the good old parts scrap. I'm going to use this frame here. Okay. One broken display. Let's carefully get that in there. All right, looks good. I'm not sure how well the buttons are going to map on to this board, but there's only one way to find out, and that's to give it a try. So I get the 3350 compatible LCD in there, put it together, and we'll see what happens. Now, if I power it up, I can hear it beep, but nothing happens on the display. Great. With the new display fitted, turning on the phone shows a blank display. This is because the phone is still running 3330 firmware, which is unable to drive this display. Time to upgrade to the 3350 firmware. The 3350 uses the same size 4 megabyte flash as the 3330, so this shouldn't be a problem. Okay, and start. Let that run. Okay, it's coming on. Here we go. Yeah, it's a high resolution text. A security code. Uh oh. Right. After flashing, the phone is powering up, but the phone is now asking for a security code. Trying the default code of 12345 doesn't work, if that's even the code. Doing some checks, I'm finding the number 1 button is now acting like one of the function buttons. It's a good thing I've also got a serial cable to be able to use the server software functions. 
By doing a full factory reset, I can bypass the need to enter a security code. Then I can restart the phone and try it out. So already we can see things are a bit different with the two options to correspond to the two buttons that would normally be underneath. Um, and that button doesn't bring up the menu. Maybe clear does. And it does, okay. What does up and down do? That seems to be a clear. Here we can see the new two button menu system. The keys are now mapping out on this 3310 quite differently. The clear button is now menu. The center button is now the up button. The up button is now the names or sometimes the clear button. The down button is now end call. And the one button is now start call. So I can go up through the menu items, but not down them. It's not great, but it's enough for me to use the menus. Looking through the menus, we can see this phone has WAP services, and the picture editor is also included. There are some new games in this model, such as Magic Draw, and I don't even know what sort of game this is. Link 5 is a first to get five in a row game, just like Stones from the third party created 3310 games. And Dance to Music, a dance moves game. The Tones menu is now a sub-menu of the Settings menu. And yes, it does still have the screensaver option right at the bottom. It's now called Profile Logo. Profile logos, or screensavers, can still be animated, and they now take up the whole screen. The phone has a lunar calendar function, which only works when the phone is in Chinese. And the only user manual I've been able to find is also only in Chinese. The Chinese manual does mention that there's an English version available, but you need to contact Nokia directly to request one. Since they probably don't have any left, I've decided to skip this part. In the previous video, I made a mistake. When swapping the main boards, I pointed to the flash memory chip in the 3310. I was instead pointing to the RAM chip. The flash chip is here next to the RAM chip. Since then, I've learned that not only is the flash chip different between models, but the RAM chip is also different. The 3310 has 128 kilobytes of RAM, and the 3330 has 256 kilobytes of RAM. The 3350 also uses 4 megabytes of flash and 256 kilobytes of RAM, just like the 3330. But for the next upgrade, I'm going to need even more RAM. I have several more 33 series mainboards that I've collected. The first noticeable difference on the later revisions are the many extra pads for button locations. This makes later revision 33 series boards flexible for use in different button layouts. I check through these and they have the standard 2 megabyte flash chips, meaning these later revision boards would have come out of 3310s or 3315s except for this one, which has a 4 megabyte flash chip, but also it has a whopping 512 kilobyte RAM chip. Okay, time for a very quick board upgrade. Okay, I want to save that board because that's the 4 megabyte compatible with the 3330 and the 3350. Okay, let's get the new board in there. This shouldn't take very long at all. Easy. Okay, new board is in. I don't know which model this came out of but combined with the high resolution LCD, this is what I need to be able to flash this into a Nokia 3410. After dropping this board into my 3310, it responds to the flasher and takes a 3410 firmware file. When powering up, it all looks good. The Nokia 3410 was the first Java compatible phone 
and represents the beginning of the downloadable app era for phones. The first thing I notice is the number one button is now working again with my 3310 keypad. The navigation controls are still funky, but quite usable. Menus and functions are similar to the 3350, but with a new title bar at the top of the screen. There's a new extras menu, with many of the customization functions now grouped together, such as screensaver, picture editor, and the ringtone composer. The screensavers in this model are really interesting. The first option is called standard, and when going through them, they include both static, but also the animated style screensavers from the 3330. It turns out the animated screensavers in the standard section are just sequences of bitmap images of the sort that Nokia were using in the 3330. So what then is in the animated section? These are much more complex animated screensavers. But the animated screensavers in the 3410 are actually 3D software programs that use the new 3D graphics engine that Nokia built specially for the 3410. Some of these screensavers are actually quite impressive, especially considering this is basically just a 3310 with extra memory. There is even frame rate slowdown when the 3D elements take up most of the screen, showing that Nokia were really pushing the limits of what they could do with this CPU. Looking through the rest of the phone, there are a couple of other new menu items. One is downloads. This is used for connecting to Nokia servers to download new content. Another new menu item is applications, which there are currently none loaded into this phone. There's a memory option, and this tells us the full 180 kilobytes of user space is currently available. Next, we'll look at the games in the games menu, and these are quite standard but the games are slightly different in this model. Looking at Bumper shows the game has been redesigned with a new pinball layout. Space Impact has also been changed with new elements and a wider field of view. Snake 2 simply has a larger border around the playfield, which is a bit disappointing for what was originally Nokia's flagship game. There's a download game option here, which is a duplicate to the download menu, which can also download games. And there's a more games option where the downloaded games are put. Unfortunately, it's empty. And this being a 2G phone with no 2G tower nearby, plus all of Nokia's game servers having been turned off since the fall of Rome, makes this kind of sad that there's no extra games in here. Games were usually added using the web browser to download them. In later Nokia models, adding games and apps was also possible using a serial cable and uploading from a computer. But not with the 3410. This phone is just too early to handle any sort of file uploading ability. During my search for games and ways to upload them into the 3410, I came across this mention on the Lost Media Wiki of a lost original Nokia 3410 game. The game called Monkiki's Castles has been found again just a few years ago. This was one of the first ever mobile Java games to be made. It only runs on the 3410 because it uses Nokia's special 3D graphics engine that was built into this phone. It's a 3D platform puzzle game that had been lost over a decade ago when the servers were switched off and the 3410 entered its e-waste phase. There are emulators today that can run this newly found game, but I want to run it on original Nokia hardware and see it the way it was meant to be played. There are also many other Java games that I want to try out. This means finding a way to upload games to the 3410. After extensive searching in the depths doing internet archaeology, I finally found this 20 year old tool that can patch Java games into a 3410 firmware file. This is a third-party built firmware hacking tool called PMM Manager by Jeep. This software patches Java games directly into the firmware, which can then be flashed into the phone using the parallel flashing cable. This software doesn't seem to run on Windows 98. It was made during the Windows XP era, and it also does run on Windows 7. 
probably Windows 10 as well. With only 180 kilobytes free in the phone for apps and games, I can only add a few games into each firmware. To change the games, I need to flash them into the phone each time. But I only need to flash the PMM area, which is about half a megabyte, making the process of trying out many games a bit easier. The first game I'm trying, of course, is Monkiki's Castles. The 3D graphics run at about 5 frames a second. The game itself is a decent puzzle platformer. I do find it a bit slow to be enjoyable though, but I like the way you can switch from a third person view to a first person perspective to look around the game world. I tried out many different games, including games made for later more advanced phone models. I found that sometimes the games wouldn't fit on this display because they were made for higher resolution displays in those later models. Many games do crash and have out of memory errors, though I'm impressed by how many of these later model games do actually run on here. I'm even more impressed by how some of the games made for later models scale to fit on this display. And there's dithering to adapt grayscale or color game graphics to run on this one bit black and white display. The Java engine and the 3D graphics engine that Nokia made for this phone is actually quite impressive. Seeing all this makes me think that the CPU in this phone would be powerful enough to run a native port of Doom. There's even a third party SDK called Nokix which can develop native code for the 33 series of phones, though this would be a big project. I did find some games that I do really like for the 3410. There's a port of Prince of Persia that plays quite well. There's even an official version of Splinter Cell that plays really well. I really like black and white LCD screens and I love the way this game looks on here. There are some good shoot 'em ups including the vertical scrolling Siberian Strike. And the horizontal scrolling Planet Zero. Many of the best games for the 3410 were developed by a company called Gameloft. I'm also impressed by the look of Rail Rider, a really good looking game with creative use of the form factor and controls. If you want to donate to this channel, I now have Super Thanks as well as Patreon. But these videos are offered for free. If you just want to enjoy watching them, then thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.